There's a new Halo modding tool in town, and it's one that Halo modders have been waiting 20 years for. The mythical modding tool known as Prometheus has finally been released. I'm guessing that most people have never heard of this tool, so allow me to explain the legend of Prometheus. Let's go back in time to the year 2005, on what was once the most popular Halo modding website, halomods.com. This is a forum I spent many, many years on. It was home to a passionate community of people who helped reverse engineer the Halo map file format, develop modding tools, write tutorials, and most importantly, make mods for the various Halo games. The section of the forums I spent the most time on was the Halo 2 section, which at the time was only available on the original Xbox. Back then, there was no official way to modify the game, and doing so required you to hack your original Xbox console and use community-made tools to modify the game files. The format of the Halo map file is extremely complex. Developing modding tools for these files required reverse engineering and programming skills, and was no easy task. Only a small group of people were capable of writing these modding tools, and many aspects of the Halo map file weren't well understood. However, this didn't stop people from modding the game. Over the years, many different modding tools were made, and while most of them worked fine for basic things, trying to do more complex tasks such as adding new objects to a map or importing custom models would often corrupt the map file and cause the game to crash. It was common practice to make backups of your modded map files after each change, and at the end of developing your mod, you'd oftentimes have dozens of backups. Some programs would run into compatibility issues with map files that were modified by other tools, and required you made changes in a specific order with specific tools or else you risk corrupting your map. Creating mods was a delicate process of using the right tool for the right task in the right order. It was quite common to have to restart your mod several times over, or just have to abandon certain ideas due to the modding tools not being reliable enough. However, there was one tool that was supposed to fix all of this, and change the way people modded Halo forever. That tool was Prometheus. Prometheus was being developed by a group known as Halo Dev, which consisted of some of the oldest and most knowledgeable members of the Halo modding community. Their goal was to create one application that worked for both Halo 1 and 2, and provided all the features you could want when creating custom levels. This was an extremely ambitious project, but the members of Halo Dev were known for making tools like SparkEdit, Arsenic, and many others that had become common household names. As time went on, they would periodically post development updates on their website, and show off the current progress. They boasted the advanced rendering capabilities of the tool, robust UI, and wide variety of features it would have. However, the tool wouldn't be released until they deemed it ready, so everyone would just have to wait and hope it would one day be completed. Fast forward a few years and Prometheus still hasn't been released. The development updates had stopped appearing, and the members of the Halo dev team hadn't been active on any of their accounts for quite some time. The remaining members of the Halo mods community became fatigued from working with broken modding tools, and advancements in modding capabilities had come to a halt. Many people moved on to other games and communities, or stepped away entirely to focus on real-life events. Between 2009 and 2011, Halomods.com would split into three separate communities, each with their own website and forums. Over the next few years, those websites along with Halo Dev would become dormant and go offline permanently. Nearly a decade of history would be lost and forgotten, but this was a common fate for websites of the early 2000s. Fast forward to 2021, where I made the decision to change career paths and finally get into game design. More specifically, I wanted to be a tooling engineer. I knew I had the skills for this type of work, but nothing to show that on my resume. So I decided to create an interactive level editing tool which I could put on my GitHub and resume in place of having formal work experience in the game industry. I wanted to create something that would be on par with the tools a modern day game developer would be using, and this is when I decided to have another go at making a modding tool for Halo 2. I knew the modding community was long gone, but Halo modding tools presented many technical challenges that would help me demonstrate my abilities for this type of job. So I got right to work. In a few months time, I had already completed several features that we were never able to achieve in the 2000s. Most notably, I had made a working map compiler that could build new map files from scratch, and even managed to convert custom level geometry created with the Halo 2 Vista editing kit to the Xbox version of the game. In just a short amount of time, I had already achieved most of the things that held modders back for years, and I was only just getting started. I decided to call this new modding tool Prometheus, as both a joke and a nod to the mythical Halo modding tool that never came to be. On April 1st, 2021, I made a tweet showing off that I had achieved custom level geometry on the Xbox version of Halo 2, and did it using a tool called Prometheus. While it didn't get much attention at the time, it left a few people wondering if it was real or just an April Fool's joke. A few days later, I'd released the map files to prove it was real, and that Prometheus was alive and well. 
even though what I was calling Prometheus was something I created entirely myself. Over the next year, I invested a significant amount of time into the rendering capabilities of Prometheus, and wrote a custom translation layer that allowed me to use Xbox GPU shaders on PC. This let me render things with almost pixel-level accuracy to how they're rendered in-game. I also added support to import tags from the Halo 2 MCC editing kit, which allows for things like custom-level geometry, models, animations, and AI pathfinding data to be converted over to Xbox format. All things which were never really possible in the 2000s. And that brings us to present day. Over 20 years after the mythical Halo modding tool called Prometheus was announced, I'm happy to finally say that today is the day that Prometheus gets released. Along with this video, I've uploaded an alpha version of the Prometheus modding tool I've been developing over the past couple of years. Now, I know no one is actually going to use this tool to mod the original Xbox version of Halo 2, especially when the game has been ported to PC and even has a full editing kit available. But I mean, come on, look how good the BSP viewer looks. Even if no one uses this tool to create an actual mod, I've gotten plenty of enjoyment from just flying around the BSP viewer and admiring my work. Look at these pixels. God damn, do these pixels look good. I could ramble on and tell you all about the techniques used to render this grass, or this water despite it still having a bunch of issues, or how unbelievably complicated the shader system for this game is, but I won't bore you with the details. There's lots of other neat features I added as well, such as synchronizing the state of objects throughout the entire editor, which means if you move an object in the BSP viewer, it will update the tag file in real time, and vice versa. I also implemented an undo-redo system, which can even be used for version control similar to Git, though this isn't exposed in the UI just yet. I do plan to open source the tool in the near future after I clean up some of the code. There's still many features I'd like to add, and I hope to continue working on it when I have spare time, as I really do enjoy doing this stuff. However, there's no guarantee this will happen, as I already have new projects lined up that'll be consuming the majority of my time. For anyone who's actually thinking of using this tool to create a mod, there's one thing I want to mention. While this version does allow you to create new map files from scratch and has a fully functional BSP editor, I haven't included the functionality to import tags from the Halo 2 MCZ editing kit. This means you won't be able to create custom level geometry, models, or animations just yet. The reason for not including this functionality is all due to shaders. When you create a custom level or model, you need to create a shader tag, which is what tells the game use these DirectX shaders and those textures to render this object. The shader system in Halo 2 is extremely complex, and converting shader tags from PC to Xbox is a very difficult process. I've spent around 6 to 8 months reverse engineering the shader system just to understand how it works, and another 2 to 3 months working on a conversion process to convert PC shaders to Xbox format. Currently this process can convert around 68% of shaders successfully, but there's still a couple bugs I haven't worked out which can cause the game to crash under certain circumstances. Before I include this functionality in the alpha build, I want to try and at least fix the crashing issues and maybe get the conversion process closer to 100% compatibility. I'm giving myself a deadline of a few months time to do this, and then regardless of what state the conversion process is in, I'll release a build with this functionality, along with open sourcing the project. I know I said the original goal of this project was to build up resume material for becoming a tooling engineer, but I actually changed my mind during the first year of working on this project and decided to just go make my own game instead. Anyways, that about does it for this video. I want to give a huge shout out to all the OG members of the Halo Mods forums. If any of you are watching this video right now, I hope you're all doing good and would love to hear from you in the comments. Also, if there's anything you'd like to see me make a video on in the future, leave a comment down below and I'll check them out.